Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops and travel the country doing commission projects. However, today I'm going to show you a technique using a material that we call Torino, a lime based interior exterior plaster from Italy. Let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I've done to get ready for the Torino finish is I applied the quartz primer. Torino is a lime based plaster, so therefore we have to stay within the lime based system, which is the quartz based primer. Quartz primer uh, interior exterior cleans up with soap and water. Uh, you, it comes in a white base. You can tint it. If you want to tint it, use pigment. Never paint. Pigment is concentrated. Paint is not. Paint will actually dilute down the quartz primer and cause it not to work properly, which means you're going to have failure issues. It's not going to stick to the substrate that it's going over top of, and the lime plasters won't stick to it. Okay, so I rolled it on using a ha quarter inch nap roller. Let it dry 100%. I put two coats on. Tools, stainless steel texture trial, and we'll probably use a, uh, most likely a stainless steel putty. Okay, Torino primer, or I'm sorry, Torino plaster. Lime based, interior, exterior, it is made in Italy. It's a tint base, you have to tint it. I've tinted it up to a black sapphire color. And I'm gonna go ahead and get this on my trial and start putting it on this wall. And what I'm gonna do is coat, here's the color here surface with about an 18th, I'm sorry, eighth of an inch thick layer. Okay, it's nice and smooth. Now then I'm going to do this as a non-traditional finish, more of a decorative finish. I'm just going to coat the surface and get it on there. And I, but I want it on fairly even. Not too smooth, but I don't want to see a whole lot of top trial marks in it. Because it'll make it easier for us to manipulate. If it's all sloppy on there haphazardly, we're going to have a mess. We don't want that. So it is covering it with one coat, 100% of the surface. If I'm doing a wall, you know, I'm going to cover out 5 foot 5 5 area, manipulate it, and then. Uh, move on or I'll have somebody putting it on while somebody else manipulates it. Trial creates suction when it's against the wall. So all I'm going to simply do is let it do that suction motion. Now if you don't have the material thick enough, you're not going to get a, an interesting look. If it's too thick, it's going to be used using a lot of material. So I need more material because I'm not getting anything. It's putting it a little bit thicker. Now what I'm going to do is, there's my suction, and when I move it, it creates all this cool interest. And that's what I'm looking for. The biggest thing about my interest pattern is I don't want to see uh, any edges of this trowel where this trowel was on here. So no hard lines. I'm not really trying to create too distinctive a pattern for this movement. I just want a nice organic pattern on the wall. Okay. Oops. There you go. That's it for that pad, that step of the process. So what I'm going to do is allow this to dry 100% because I'm going to come back and do a backfill and then um, backfill it burnish it, wax it, we'll be finished. So we'll see this once this dries. Dry. Okay, second coat. Same material, same tools. What we're going to do now is backfill all this texture. So we're going to be using a little bit more pressure to really get this in there, like so. Because we can't pile it on the surface. If we do, we're going to lose all that movement we created in the first coat, or in the first step, I should say. You still want to make sure you're working organically. No straight lines here or there. This is a lot less forgiving. So it just fills all that in. And what I'll do is I'll show you before I get too far across. This is where we were. Look. 
if you can see see the difference in the texture. First coat, backfill. Okay. So when you look at it, when you enter a room, you'll be like, whoa, that's a lot of texture. And you go up and touch it, it's like, hmm, pretty cool because there's nothing there. It's the biggest problem with like photographing these finishes for magazines or for websites that a lot of these textures, people think they're textures, but they're not because of the illusion. That's what makes it real fun. Okay, that's it for that coat. What I just want to do is go through, gather up any loose material that might be remaining on the surface, and then uh, burnish. Now we burnish it, we're not gonna get it to a super high sheen like our filtered plasters. But this Torino plaster is something different. It's got a heavy aggregate, or not a heavy aggregate, I'm sorry. Medium size aggregate, like kind of like a Marmorino, but it polishes more like a Grisello. So we're gonna let this get to that stage where we can burnish it to humid state and then move on. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, plaster's at the humid state, we're gonna burnish it. Trials at like a 30 degree angle. Look, I'm not killing it. If I was killing this with the pressure, you'd hear a different, I mean, you'd hear, you know, I'd be like muscling it, but I'm not muscling it. It's the beauty of a nice plaster and good tools and knowing what you're doing with the materials and the tools and the technique. So as I burnish it, it's catching the high spots it's created. You see? Look really at the shine. It's not wet. That's the shine off of a textured plaster like that. So we're going to let this dry 100% and carry on. Meaning, I'm going to seal it with some clear Italian polishing wax. And then I'm going to put a pearlescent wax over top of it. And I think I forgot to say something about the Torino plaster. 100% lime base made in Italy. It tints with the uh, lime compatible tints. You can't just use regular pigments or regular tints um, because lime compatible tints are lime stable. Universal pigments are not lime stable. You got to be very careful. If you put uh, universal tints in there, it's going to the, uh, the lime's going to attack it, and you're going to lose your color. And you never use paint. Paint's just the worst thing ever to use. Just stay away from it. Just use lime compatible tints. So let's let this dry. Come back. And okay, so we're dry. So now what I'm going to do now? is take my Italian polishing wax. I'm going to seal the surface with one coat to protect it because when I put the pearlescent wax on there, I don't want the pearlescent wax to like take into it too much. So I'm just going to trowel it over and I'm going to let it dry and I'll polish it. So the Italian polishing wax is an interior exterior wax. You can use it on just about any surface. You can tint it with pigment. You can tint it with mica. It comes from the factory, clear, gold, bronze, silver, uh, coppers, bronzes, I think I said bronze, whatever. Uh, all kinds of shades, pearls, sparkles, reds, blues, greens. So what I'm gonna do is like just 100% coverage on the surface. And this is gonna seal it. And that way when I go to add this pearlescent wax over top of it, um, I'm not, the pearlescent, because the plaster's dry, it's hungry. Um, so if I put the pearl wax on there, it's just going to suck it in. And what's going to happen is it's going to be super, super strong, and we might even lose the effect of the plaster. Okay? So let's let this dry. Polish it. Moving on. Okay, wax is set up. Let's grab a rag and polish this up. Just enough to... What happens if we don't polish it, and we go to put the uh, pearlescent wax over top of it, kind of just soaks into the other wax. So by polishing it seals it and allows the other wax to kind of slide across the surface. Check it out. That's with wax right there. Maybe what I'll do is uh, wax half of it. How's that? That sounds like a good plan. We'll put this like right here. I'll show you clear wax, pearlescent wax. 
Okay, I got my trowel and my pearlescent wax. Let's put it on. So possibilities are endless. Now, this wax is still really powerful. I mean, you can see the difference. So what I'm gonna do is have a rag handy and kind of buff some of the excess out. Some of these low spots, just I'm gonna tap it. I'm not gonna rub it, because if I rub it, it rubs it out. By tapping it, it leaves it down where I want it. Just enough. Then I come back and trowel over it. So if I rub it, I end up rubbing almost all of it out. So if I'm gonna rub, use a very light touch, kind of more of a blot, scrub sort of thing. So I'm going to go back over it just to gather any excess off the top. So I'm going to go in here and get some of this so I can always keep coming back and changing it. Yeah, I know it seems like a lot of work, but it enhances the finish and that's what we're going for. away. As soon as that's dry we can polish it with a clean rag. Always lint free, color free because the wax will pull the uh, or it could pull colorants out of your rag. I'm just going to use cheesecloth. Just go in here and polish it now. What happens when you polish it like the mica pops to the top in the wax and it makes it just more brilliant. It should be going in circles. That way if I make a mistake, you don't notice. Okay. All right, and that's that. So I'm going to pull off all my tape and I'll be right back. Tape's off, check it out. So look, two t exact same plaster. But when you start bringing wax and tinted waxes and pearlescent waxes and all that cool stuff into it, you can change things dramatically. Okay, I'll bring it in so you can see it. Yeah, see all that cool stuff down here? So it's way more noticeable, a little bit more modern looking with that metallic on there. And then nice, soft, natural, more subtle. Cool though. Real cool. I think it... I like it. It's Torino plaster, line based with the pearl wax and clear wax. So you can totally see the difference. Complete, two totally different looks. Okay, it's that simple. So my name is Ron Lehman. I am from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops. I also go around the country teaching classes and I travel all over the place doing commission projects in people's homes, businesses, restaurants. I do casinos. If you get a chance, go to the website, thefauxschool.com and check it out. I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.